Hello ladies and gents and welcome to episode 2 of the Rainbow Six Siege Masterclass. In this episode we'll be looking at some of the different operators that you can play as in the game, their strengths, weaknesses and all of those fancy weapons and gadgets at your disposal. Operators are the bread and butter of Rainbow Six Siege. Which one you pick at the start of a round will have a profound effect on how you play the game and the role that you fit into. Generally speaking, operators are divided into three groups, those with high armour and low speed, those with medium armour and medium speed, and those with low armour and high speed. Let's take a look at a few examples now in each class. An example of a low armour high speed operator is IQ. She is very fast and her primary weapon by default is the 552 Commando and that's an assault rifle which puts out a lot of damage and can be devastating in the right hands. Her specialist gadget is the electronics detector, a wrist mounted device that lets her see electronics and explosives through walls. This is extremely useful for locating bombs and to use before entering a room that you haven't cleared yet. Pop up the screen, scan for electronics and if you identify them sometimes you'll be able to destroy them by shooting at them through the wall. Don't give the enemy an opportunity to catch you off guard with a nitro cell. An example of a medium armour medium speed operator is Sledge, one of my personal favourites. Sledge moves relatively fast and he has an awesome gadget at his disposal, the breaching hammer. Now this thing is amazing, why? Well quite simply put it allows you to breach into buildings, through walls and windows within a split second. You're not going to be fumbling around making noise with a breaching charge or nitro cell, it's just like this, wham bam thank you ma'am and you can enter a new location in an instant. Great for surprising your enemy, going through walls and shooting them in the back. And finally, let's take a look at an high armour, low speed operator, Fuse. Now Fuse is an absolute beast for a couple of reasons. Equip him with a ballistic shield and pistol for a great combination. Use the shield to enter rooms whilst your team supports and backs you up from behind. He can tank and distract with ease. But check this out and this one is the kicker. Fuse's unique gadget is the cluster charge and this thing can make or break a game for you. Place it onto a wall and it will launch grenades through it to the opposite side. How cool is that? If you know there's an enemy in there, no problem. Put it in the right spot and you can take out your enemies with ease without ever exposing yourself to danger. Awesome. Be careful with it though, if you're launching grenades into a hostage room you might end up taking out the hostage in the process and losing the round for your team, or even sometimes taking out teammates. Don't be that guy. Something else to keep in mind when selecting your weaponry and equipment for each operator, whichever primary you decide to pick will have an effect on your speed. With Fuse, if we take the shield, our mobility drops to 30 because it's big and clunky. If we take the AK-12, it's 40 not so bad and if we take the pistol it's at the maximum amount of 50 and will be more mobile. You gotta take all of this into consideration when choosing how to set up your operator. And something else that you should consider based on what you've picked is to decide what role to play in the team. If I were to choose an operator like Montagna who has a large fully extendable shield then really you should think about being the first person to enter a room when attacking. Become the point man, be the support guy that can defend your team, soak up all of that damage with the shield as they come in behind you. And if you're playing as a really defensive character like Capcan or Tachanka, you should be thinking about where are the best places to set up your defences and surprise the enemy team as they enter. With Capcan, place your trip mines at the bottom of doors where you think players are likely to come in and not see them, or even underneath a barricaded door so that you can hide the laser. And as Tachanka, place your mounted machine gun in areas which are going to give you a lot of coverage over multiple entry points, windows, doors that the enemy are likely to enter through. The more you think about this kind of stuff, the more effective you'll become as a player. We're going to finish off today's episode with a few tips and tricks for some of my favourite operators starting off with Smoke. Smoke is a defensive operator that has three deadly gas grenades at his disposal. You can throw these anywhere in the level and detonate one at a time. If there's an enemy lingering in the gas for too long, they're going to take a significant amount of damage per second and eventually die. You can also use these to block off areas and halt an attacker's advance. As well as this, Smoke is immune to his own gas and you can use this to surprise an enemy by moving through it, he ain't going to see you come in and he won't expect you to. Now that is sneaky. 
Rook is also one of my favourites, and whilst his gadget isn't that interesting, it is a great tool for defenders. Make sure at the start of the round to deploy that extra armour that Rook has, inform your teammates and make sure that they all pick it up. It will give you so much more torso protection. Jaeger is a great defensive operator too. He has three deployable active defence systems that will destroy any grenades thrown into nearby rooms. Placing them near windows or doors is highly recommended. This is an incredibly effective counter to normal grenades and also fuses cluster charges which as we said can be deadly. And don't forget about Thermite when you're attacking either, he's the only operator that can breach reinforced walls and if you're feeling sneaky when attacking, come in as Twitch and use her shock drone to disrupt or even kill unsuspecting defenders. They never saw that one coming. Ultimately, every operator in Rainbow Six Siege brings something valuable to the table and it's up to you to decide what works best for your team and the composition that you have in that specific round. Communicate, strike a nice balance of armour, gadgets and speed and you'll be effective in your mission. As always, thank you for watching guys, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and make sure to check out the next episode where we'll be looking at destruction and how to use it to your advantage. Peace out home slicers, I'll see you in the next one.